Hey, and welcome to Tools on Tech. This is the second part of my two-part Notion home screen video. And here we are going to talk sections. And for those that watch till the end, I'll reveal a nice bonus tip on how to quickly access sections of Notion straight from the task bar. How to organize a home screen is very personal. So my main goal is to give a few examples to get the creative juices flowing. And as most things in Notion can easily be rearranged, it will be at the very least a help to avoid looking at an empty page like I did in the beginning. Now, to help you get to the right information quickly, there is a detailed table of contents in the description, as well as a link to the end result for easy stealing. Now, don't say I never did anything for you guys. Let's jump to the screencast. One of the things I hit in the beginning is how to group icons. I'm going to give a few examples to get you started. Keep in mind that this is more of a base and you can adjust at a later time. If you're wondering if you need to group something, a good rule of thumb is to start with too much on your launch page because it's super simple to group things later down the line. The first section I'm going to talk about is the inbox. It's a simple inline database and is used as a catch-all when collecting things during the day. Say you're browsing the web and see something that you find interesting, but not something you can take care of right now. Simply send it to your inbox and you can think about where to put it at a later date. I'm planning a video on inbox systems and why they are efficient soon, so be sure to subscribe to get notified once that one hits. Now the reason I use inline database is so I will always see when there are things in my inbox. To avoid it filling up and at some point getting ignored because there's just too much there, I add a small image to the side. Next to it looking nice, it's also a simple indicator. If the list of items is longer than the image, I really need to block out a bit of time to catch up. Now that we have a place set up to capture new ideas, it's time to put that information somewhere you can easily find it back. My current setup is split up between personal, work, lists, quick links and routines. Personal can mean a lot of things to different people. I used my own health as a base. It's a bit like The Sims, but one tier higher. My current list has social, fulfillment, mental and physical health. For social, I have a page called Family and Friends to keep track of connections. I put things in there like birthdays, gift ideas, allergies and other important information I don't want to forget about, like someone's Wi-Fi password. Then for fulfillment, I have a list of personal projects. Think travel plans, things I want to build and hobbies I want to try. I also mark these as active or someday maybe to avoid me taking on too many things at the same time. Time is a resource after all. For my mental health, I have a gratitude log. Every week I make a small entry with photos of things I'm grateful for and accomplishments. Now, as a quick boost, I open this to see all the things that happened recently. And at New Year's Eve, I go through the last year to have a bird's eye view of all the things that happened during that year. It's super nice and I can highly recommend doing so. Finally, for my physical health, I have a workout page where I keep track of exercise plans. This could be data, like the amount of repetitions in the gym, but also contains food intake and a list of the best VR games that make me break out in sweat. Because I'm having a lot of movement, not because I'm scared out of my mind looking at you Half-Life Alex. The next section is about work. Now, this isn't limited to your daily job as we usually have a lot more places that expect something from us. You might do some volunteer work like helping out at a convention. I also put ongoing projects here. For example, my YouTube channel. The work pages are usually their own launch pages linking to people, projects and information. By keeping that separate, you avoid things bleeding into each other and keep a clear mind. 
Then I have a section for lists. This is where to keep collections of data like recipes, wish lists, memes, and bookmarks to interesting sites. This is where the database functionality of Notion really gets to shine. For example, with recipes, I use a gallery view to get a beautiful overview of all the food I know how to make. And by using tags, I can easily filter on things like vegetarian meals. The wish list also uses a gallery view, but I added a property to it with the expected price, allowing me to sort things from cheap to expensive. That way I can see how realistic something is but also if the price has changed since adding it to my list. You can also share this list with close friends, giving them a good indication on things you might like. Though in my case, they all know it's food and drinks anyway. And finally, we get to bookmarks. By using a table view with tags, I'm able to quickly drill down to bookmarks that I need to find. It reminds me a bit of Delicious, a site that was used to organize bookmarks in the old days of the internet. As you're using Notion more and more, you will find yourself drilling down to the same pages over and over again. Save yourself some time and put a link to these pages on your launch page. I make a section for it called Quick Links. This part changes all the time as I add and remove links. As a bonus, it's also a nice reminder about what's currently top of mind. The last thing I add are routines. These are pages with repeating things that I do on a frequent basis, like weekly reviews, cleaning schedules, anything where I don't want to miss a step. To give an example, here's my weekly review routine. It's a combination of steps and inline databases that pull information out of Notion so I can quickly review them. It's based on the weekly review of Dave and Alan's Getting Things Done, and tweaked for maximum results, at least my maximum results. You watched till the end, or you clicked on the table of contents, but don't worry, I won't judge, and here's your bonus tip. If you use Chrome, you can browse to any Notion page and add that as an application to your taskbar. To do so, make sure you are on a page with an icon. This is important as set icon will turn into a clickable image on your taskbar. Open the menu on the top right, go to more tools and choose create shortcut. In the following dialog, you will see the page icon and name. Now I usually click on the open as a window option because I like the clean, no fluff around it notion view I get then. Finally, we click on create. This will create a shortcut that you can pin or drag to your taskbar and use to quickly start, or if it's already open, to quickly switch to the page in Notion. Need multiple windows because you need to copy or compare data? Simply shift click on the icon to open a second instance of that window. You can then drag and drop as you please. Thanks for watching the video. This is the end of this two part about home screens. I hope it was useful and if you have any questions or feedback, be sure to put them in the comments below. I try to read and answer all of them. Now I'll mention the usual thing, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, but I'm also going to ask you for a huge favor. If you know anyone that would find this useful, let them know I exist. This is a small channel and that's one of the best ways to help me grow. If you want to watch more, I'm currently aiming at one of these larger videos every two weeks. And in between, I post smaller vlogs where I usually rant a bit about things that mattered to me. But it also keeps the YouTube gods happy and will give them a weekly offering to keep my ratings up. As always, see you next time. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.